In this video lecture, I'll discuss socialization, uh, which, as you recall, is one of the processes uh, that is a throughput uh, in the group open systems model. Uh, the emphasis is on a social uh, in socialization. Uh, it's a process uh, in which we bring a new individual uh, into a group uh, or an organization uh, and help them learn the social knowledge, skills, and abilities necessary to become a functional member uh, of the group. Uh, one key consideration in uh, socialization uh, is, is who socializes. Uh, and we look at the influence of uh, various uh, uh, individuals. Uh, senior leaders play a role uh, in most uh, organizations, um, uh, typically indirectly, uh, in that they uh, influence culture. And in area four, we will uh, uh, discuss uh, culture in, in more depth and how senior leaders uh, can influence that culture. Sometimes senior leaders play a, a formal role in socialization, and that very often they, uh, they meet with new members of an organization uh, or group. Uh, and, and help uh, uh, contribute to uh, the socialization process that we'll, we'll discuss in, in more uh, depth as we continue. Uh, there are typically formal socialization agents. Uh, remember uh, the, uh, when we discussed uh, in, in uh, uh, types of groups uh, that uh, there are formal groups, uh, and typically the, uh, the leaders uh, in uh, the chain of command in those formal groups uh, play a, a role in socialization in that they typically uh, have more frequent contact with new members uh, and uh, are a part of the socialization process. Uh, other organizational members uh, play a role. Uh, essentially, any member of the organization that a, a new member comes in contact with um, contributes to socialization, sometimes purposefully, sometimes uh, uh, not purposefully. Uh, and external individuals uh, play a role uh, in socialization. Uh, socialization obviously is a process uh, that, that occurs outside the organization as well. Uh, it began at birth when we were socialized in the family groups. Uh, we were then socialized into groups external to the family, uh, you know, play groups in the neighborhood. Uh, we started school. Uh, we were socialized into, into larger groups uh, in school uh, by our teachers, uh, by coaches, uh, other members of, of the school. Uh, that continues on uh, through uh, whatever formal or technical education we might have had prior to entry into the profession. Uh, and family members play a role in uh, socialization, uh, as well as uh, other professional groups in, in helping define uh, roles for us. There are goals of socialization. Uh, typically not uh, formally stated, uh, but uh, when we examine socialization, we can discern uh, certain goals uh, of socialization processes. Uh, the most important of which is conformity. Uh, typically, individuals are asked to adapt uh, to the group. In other words, to conform, uh, to uh, behave like the group, uh, to believe like the group, and, and act like the group. I uh, recall we've discussed earlier the attraction uh, selection attrition framework. Typically, certain individuals are attracted to certain types of groups. Uh, groups typically only uh, accept members who are most like them or those that they believe are, are most likely to become like them. Uh, and finally, uh, those people who cannot uh, fully uh, integrate into the group, who do not become like uh, members of the group, uh, are typically uh, 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 somehow uh, removed from the group. Uh, the group uh, wants to uh, survive. Uh, and more importantly, the group wants to survive on its own terms. Uh, so one of the goals of socialization uh, is uh, to enable each individual to contribute to group survival. And that typically occurs uh, best if uh, the group uh, member uh, accepts all of the behavioral norms, roles, status, uh, and works towards the group goals. We want individuals to be committed to the group. Uh, we want them to uh, to want to contribute to the group's uh, purpose, to its uh, mission, uh, and uh, which you know is typically strongly related to survival of that group, uh, at least uh, in in organizational and in a particular business. Uh, life in, in the real world. One of the goals of socialization uh, is that we internalize the norms, values, and roles. Uh, over a period of time, uh, we tend to become uh, very much like the other group members. 
uh, we uh, begin to accept uh, the norms of the group. Uh, we begin to uh, uh, not only just accept them, uh, but come to uh, believe that they're, they're appropriate uh, and believe that uh, there are norms as well, uh, as well as roles and uh, values. Uh, we uh, soon come to uh, uh, adopt uh, the values uh, if they were different th than ours. Uh, and again, that uh, attraction selection, uh, selection attrition uh, framework uh, plays a role of this in that, that typically we will uh, already possess those values or believe those values to be ours uh, or they will be uh, uh, very close to ours and, and so close that, that a shift is not uh, uh, problematic for most of us. Uh, there can be some difficulties uh, in the socialization process. Uh, one is that uh, most organizations uh, don't have a clearly defined uh, program of socialization. Many organizations have clearly defined programs of, of training, uh, apprenticeship, uh, or, or other processes designed to develop the knowledge, skills, and abilities uh, in terms of technical and professional uh, conduct in the organization. Uh, but again, the emphasis uh, on socialization is on the social aspects of it. Typically, leaders uh, don't have uh, much input uh, into a clearly defined uh, program of socialization uh, in the organization. And they don't exert influence uh, or control over the socialization process, uh, or not as much as, as they should or could. Individuals may at times have uh, inappropriate or inaccurate expectations uh, about not only the professional and technical aspects of a job, but also the, the social expectations uh, in, a, uh, in a given organization or group. Uh, the bottom line to remember is that socialization always happens. Uh, it is the uh, tendency of human groups uh, to socialize uh, new members of the group. Uh, the only question for leaders to uh, uh, answer is whether or not uh, they will exert influence and control over socialization and whether or not that socialization will uh, be functional uh, in helping people develop socially uh, so that they can contribute to the organization's uh, goals and mission. The strategies of socialization are uh, first uh, orienting officers to organizational goals. Uh, there are many uh, norms, roles, and values associated with accomplishing organizational goals, uh, and uh, they need to uh, uh, be congruent uh, uh, with uh, the social aspects of the organization. Uh, most importantly, uh, the program needs to uh, transmit functional norms. Normative behavior in the organization needs to be uh, such that it uh, helps individuals uh, both uh, individually and as members of a group collaboratively uh, to work towards the organization's goals. Roles are important uh, in that uh, uh, roles are typically the, uh, the, the, the technical um, aspects of, of how we contribute to the, the organization's uh, goals and, and mission. Uh, and uh, another role of uh, uh, or strategy in socialization, uh, an important strategy, uh, is uh, mutual acceptance. So uh, to a certain extent, it's a two-way street. Uh, so members of the organization or the group uh, must also uh, focus not only on uh, getting the individual to uh, accept norms, values, and roles that are functional, uh, but members of the group must also uh, put effort towards uh, accepting the individual uh, as a member of their group. And finally, we must use uh, appropriate socialization tactics, uh, and that uh, will vary depending on circumstances, but we'll discuss those in more detail next. We look at socialization tactics, uh, again, kind of uh, on a continuum, uh, but uh, whether or not they're formal or, or informal. Uh, is there a policy or procedure uh, related to uh, the socialization process? Most organizations have uh, formal policies related to uh, the professional and technical uh, development of individuals, but uh, most uh, don't have much uh, or, or whatever they have is very limited uh, in terms of norms, roles, values. Uh, typically in recruit training and policing and in field training you'll find some discussion, some emphasis on, on uh, values uh, typically related to, to ethical conduct, 
uh, but but not much uh, beyond uh, uh, those uh, professional aspects of norms, roles, and values. We look at whether or not the socialization is, is individual or collective. Uh, in policing in larger organizations, we tend to initially socialize people collectively, uh, bring them into a uh, bring them into a recruit school, where we. Uh, socialize them initially uh, as, as a group, uh, um, and uh, but other smaller organizations uh, bring people in uh, individually. Um, they may have gone through a recruit training uh, at a regional or, or state academy. Socialization can be sequential or, or non-sequential uh, in that there are some established stages. Uh, now, uh, our training is typically uh, staged in that there's uh, recruit training. Uh, there's uh, field training, uh, there may be other aspects of on-the-job training uh, for internal uh, transfers and things of that nature, uh, or it could be uh, non-sequential. In smaller police organizations, uh, there may not be a formalized uh, 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 even training process uh, unless uh, in, in many states it's uh, mandated. Uh, but uh, we also, and, and closely tied to whether or not it's sequential or non-sequential, is, is whether or not there's a, a fixed or, or variable time schedule. Uh, in uh, most uh, organizations, uh, the, the training uh, process is, uh, uh, is a fixed schedule, basic training so long, field training so long. Uh, but uh, in other uh, uh, socialization processes, uh, it may be variable in that, uh, um, let's say, when a patrol officer becomes a detective, uh, there may or may not be a formal uh, program, uh, and there may or may not be a, a time period tied to both the professional and technical uh, adaptation and learning as well as the, uh, the social adaptation and learning. We look at whether or not uh, the socialization tactic is what we call serial or, or disjunctive, uh, and uh, essentially uh, that uh, uh, is a fancy way of, of saying uh, is there a, a presence or an absence uh, of a role model. Whether or not the organization basically takes particular individuals and puts them on a pedestal and says you, you should be like this person. Uh, and we typically do that uh, in policing, uh, perhaps not uh, uh, with uh, a process that helps us make the best choices, uh, but think about uh, uh, who we choose uh, to be our trainers in uh, basic recruit training, who we choose to be our, our field training officers. Those are some of the most critical personnel decisions we make in a police organization uh, because whether it's our intent or not, uh, those are typically some of the first role models that new members encounter, so we uh, certainly want to make sure that uh, they are the best role model possible. Uh, finally, we look at whether or not socialization tactics uh, uh, are what we call investiture or divestiture. Uh, and essentially there we looked at do, do we want to uh, uh, accept the individual as the individual is or do we expect the individual to change? Uh, most police organizations are, are, are divestiture in that we expect you to divest yourself uh, of your previous uh, uh, social concept and adapt to the, the new social concepts. Uh, some organizations, though, seek out people who are different uh, and, and want that person to stay different. Uh, that's not typical in, in most bureaucratic organizations, uh, not typical in most police organizations. Uh, other types of organizations uh, where uh, processes are, are typically more related to, to creative processes uh, in those types of organizations, you will find uh, uh, more investiture in that uh, we go out, we typically look for people who are different than us. Uh, and again, you know, when you think about um, uh, the, the concept of group structural dimensions of heterogeneity versus homogeneity uh, and how that matches to uh, the, uh, the complexity of the task, the more complex the task, and creative tasks are typically more complex, uh, then typically uh, the greater the heterogeneity we desire uh, in terms of, of group composition. Uh, so if you're faced with a very complex task, uh, you need to uh, focus on socialization processes that bring different individuals in and, and doesn't uh, you know, compel them to, to change and become like us.